if he had won it or if he had lost it. Ironic that his national championship hope would come down to a field goal. Miami, the place to be, to be. Nebraska and Florida State, one against two. Tom Osborne and Bobby Bowden both hoping for that elusive national championship. Now the Huskers appeared to get off to the quick start. Corey Dixon on the punt return goes 70 plus yards for the touchdown that would have given the Huskers the lead but the official John Safi signals Nebraska for a penalty an illegal block called on Tyrone Williams into the third quarter Nebraska leading seven to six but Charlie Ward flips it to Kevin Knox for a 40 yard pickup and two plays later William Floyd in for the touchdown but it looked like the ball came loose on the replay it appeared it was a fumble it counts Seminoles have the 12 to 7 lead Nebraska's star running back Calvin Jones on the sideline but the Huskers didn't suffer with Lawrence Phillips taking it in from 12 yards out they missed the two point try it's a 15 13 game fourth quarter Tommy Frazier on the keeper 21 yard pickup all the way down inside the 10 yard line of Florida State Byron Bennett who had missed his last four kicks a 27 yard field goal with a minute 16 left and Nebraska with a 16 to 15 lead but Charlie Ward the Heisman winner and hopefully the Orange Bowl winner less than a minute to go to Warwick Dunn for 25 yards and then they call the personal foul on top of that Tom Osborne couldn't believe it costly mistakes Scott Bentley he's the guy they recruited could have gone to Notre Dame could have gone to Nebraska 27 yard field goal for the Seminoles they lead 18 16 but 21 seconds left Frazier to Trumaine Bell for the 30 yard pickup now he's down in plenty of time the clock ran out we thought the game was over but Tom Osborne says no there's still time and his kicker gets another shot from 46 yards away on the game's final play and a tough finish for Osborne as the Seminoles hang on and now should be college football's mythical national champions Florida State extending its bowl winning streak to nine games the Cornhuskers have lost now seven consecutive bowl games and you know Carl Auburn the A&M team Kevin McDougal on the first drive 19 yards and the Irish quickly have a 7 nothing lead 7 7 second quarter fourth and one Corey Pollock Detron Smith touchdown 14-7 A&M at the half. Notre Dame then scores on its first two possessions of the second half. We're in the fourth quarter. It's 21 all. Mike Miller, the speed to the outside. 37 yards. We're inside Aggie territory. That sets up Kevin Pendergast. 31 yards out. It's veering right, but it's good. 24-21 Irish. Rodney Thomas has a hole. Jeff Boris nails him with a helmet. The ball is loose. It is recovered. A&M would get it back, though. Pulling to Greg Short. Deep into Domer territory. Fourth and 19. Pulling. He'll hit his man, Tony Harrison, who hooks and laterals to Leland McElroy. He is there. The ball was not. Notre Dame falls on it. Frustration for the Aggies. The Irish put a cap on an impressive 11 and 1 season, 24 21 the final, leading the Notre Dame for number one charge. Aggies coach R.C. Slocum, he said, If I was Notre Dame, I'd make a strong statement for number one. West Virginia believing they deserve a piece of the pie, but they had to avoid the bite of the Gators. First quarter, 7 0 West Virginia. Eric Rett goes left, goes right. Three yards. Rett, the MVP, three touchdowns, 105 yards. It's game tied at seven. Darren stood still. He would stand still after this hit by Monty Rowe. Stud still has no idea where he is. <laughs> How the headgear works either. Next play, he's still in there, and he gets hit after throwing the ball. It's picked off by Lawrence Wright. Lawrence Wright doing his best Eric Rett imitation. He goes left. He goes right. He comes back. This play covers about 100 yards. In all, it's 52. Florida is up 14-7. They go on to win 41-7, the largest margin of victory in Sugar Bowl history. Dean throws for 255 yards. Running back Brett Moss, another 100-yard game, 11 straight for him, 158 yards in this one, two touchdowns. And Terry Donahue, who had never lost a Rose Bowl, well, his Bruins were trailing at halftime, 14-3, third quarter. A fight breaks out after a pile up four players tossed all starters two of them were seniors not a good way to end your college career it was 14 10 Wisconsin sophomore quarterback Daryl Bevel 
scrambling around. Hook not fast, but knows where to go with it. The touchdown, his only carry in the game, 21-10 Wisconsin, but UCLA got one back. It was 21-16. No timeouts, third down inside the 20 of Wisconsin. Wayne Cook should have thrown it away. Instead, he sacked, and the clock runs out. A boffo win for Barry and the Badgers. They were going mad on Madison and dancing in Pasadena. Stokes, 14 catches, 176 yards in a losing effort. The second bowl win in the 104-year history of Wisconsin football. At the Fiesta Bowl, Arizona at home in the desert against Miami, which just isn't the same out of South Florida. The Hurricane offense against the Wildcat Desert Swarm defense. Akeel Jackson, look at that pick off Collins. Miami never made it past the Arizona 40-yard line. Collins benched. Frank Costa comes in. Again, the defense. Grant Boyer intercepted. Arizona with three of those today. Costa then feeling the strength of the swarm as Rob Waldrop drops him down. Four sacks for the Wildcats. And on offense, Chuck Levy, who lined up as a quarterback, running back, and kick returner in the game. Didn't have to line up here. He outraces everybody for a 68-yard touchdown. Arizona takes it. 29 nothing, and Chuck Levy, a junior, announced after the game he is entering the NFL draft. The last time Miami was shut out, a little cable thing called ESPN was in its first year of operation. That was 1979. In Tampa, the Hall of Fame Bowl, matching a pair of seven and four schools. Michigan against North Carolina State. Tyrone Wheatley, the story. Another 100-yard game for the major in Keeney kinesiology, I think is how you say that, which is movement science. And he moved it well, giving Michigan a 7 to nothing lead. <laughs> Second quarter, how about the way Derek Alexander moved it? Study this, 79 yards on the punt return. It's a new Hall of Fame Bowl record as Michigan steps out to a 14 nothing lead. The ACC struggling in bowl games this season. On defense, third quarter, Clarence Thompson. Intercepts Terry Harvey, takes it 43 yards. It was 28 nothing at the time. About the only thing Michigan missed, well, its players were trying to dump the Gatorade on Moeller and said, hey, they get the assistant. 42-7 the final. Tyrone Wheatley did say he may be headed for the NFL draft where he'll be a top five selection, but nothing official coming from him after the game. The Tennessee in that one, 42-17. He's Schuler. Getting the game plan. The game plan is to go to the air and look for Corey Fleming. He finds him. Fleming finds the end zone. Ball's up 10 zip. Fleming, seven catches, 101 yards. Late in the first, the Lions take charge. Third and goal at the three. Kajana Carter follows blockers right up the middle. It's 10 7 volunteers. Second quarter, Tennessee by six. Collins hands it off. Carter following his blockers again. Bobby Ingram at the goal line. Carter, 19 carries, 93 yards at 17 13 at the break. Schuler gets sacked by Eric Clare. Two sacks on the day. In the fourth, Lions cap it off. Collins to the end zone. Ingram all alone. Touchdown, Ingram. Seven catches, 107 yards. Joe Paterno tying Bear Bryant's bowl record. 15 wins. The Lions defense was the difference. Holding Tennessee to 348 yards total offense. Only 348, you say? That's more than 100. Fewer than their average. Paterno said it's always nice to be up there with Bear Bryant. The Carquest Bowl. BC, Virginia. The Cavaliers have dropped their last yeah, three bowl Tom. games. Tom Coughlin leads the charge. The Eagles looking for their first bowl win in seven seasons. First possession. Foley's pass tipped into the hands of Randy Neal. Gerard Washington ran it in two plays later. Gives Virginia a 7-0 lead. Trailing 7-3 in quarter two. Coughlin says, don't worry about it. We're going to keep throwing. And Foley unloads to Clarence Cannon. 78 yards. BC's longest pass play of the year. Cannon, two touchdowns in the game. It's 10-7 Eagles. 17-13 at the half. Foley then finds a wide open Keith Miller. 46 yards. It was 24-13. They go on to win. The Eagles do. 31-13, 38,000 show up, the smallest crowd in the four-year history of the bowl. Foley, the game's MVP, called it a fitting end to his career. 